Hey guys, Josh from Sportitude today coming at you with a shoe review and the shoe review is on the new ASICS Dynaflight 3. This little guy here has just landed the middle of 2018. Um, there's a bit that's changed in this shoe which um, I'd like to touch on in this shoe review, compare it to the previous Dynaflight 2 and uh, we can go from there. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. Okay guys, Dyna Flight 3. So I'm actually holding here in front of me the reflective colorway. So um, it comes in men's and women's, and um, it's sort of a gender neutral design. So what I mean by the reflective colorway, 360 degrees or the whole way around the shoe, there is reflective paneling or stripes or flashes. So what I'm gonna show you through here is, I'm gonna get my phone out, take a photo, and see if I can prove my point. So little snap with my flash through there, done. This little guy through here, I'll come through and show you. It's reflective. See those little stripes? The logo lights up through there, and then obviously the heel on the back through there. Nice and bright. So there's some cool features about that shoe. So um, it's not going to make you run any faster. However, it's just a wicked little feature that's just going to um, add to the, the jazz of this shoe. So where the Dynaflight sits in the whole running scheme, it's no, by no means what we classify as a mileage shoe. It fits into that tempo style running or, or speed work uh, running shoe. So it's not on uh, the same sort of stack heights or cushioning system as your Cumuluses, as your Bashus, and as your Nimbuses in the ASICS family. However, um, being a lighter shoe, it's gonna be enjoyed for those persons who like to um, do some tempo runs, really speed things up and, and, um, and really hit the ground with some sort of force. Um, it does ever so slightly cater for a heel striker if you need. However, um, I don't like to put too many heel strikers inside this shoe because after that first point of contact zone and they just come through to your mid stance phase, it, there's probably not enough support to hold your foot in the right position. So it's really designed for that tempo runner hitting that midfoot uh, mid region through here. So um, in relation to all my shoe reviews, I like to start from the ground and work my way up. So let's talk all things outsole. So like a lot of brands um, in the past sort of 12 to 18 months, we're looking at shoes that have full contact points through here. So as you can see, the outsole from the heel right through to the forefoot, there is a rubber piece all the way through. So perfect time to do this. I'll compare it to the Dynaflight 2. Now I'm holding the Dynaflight 2 ladies in my hand through here. So as you can see through what we call this mid-start section through there, there's exposed EVA on that lateral side. However, as I bring it close to the camera, you can see just through here, there is a little trustic system, which essentially has given that shoe some support um, in the past. So that trustic system has been the Dynaflight 1 and the Dynaflight 2. However, Dynaflight 3, they've taken it out and they've just gone with full contact point through there. It does make the shoe a fraction lighter, not catastrophically lighter. You won't put it on and go, wow, it's so much lighter without the trustic system. It's just taken out to reduce the weight ever so slightly. So I'm just going to quickly touch on the midsole with the Dynaflight 3 through here. Now, um, there's not a lot to talk about in relation to um, the cushioning system. We've got your flight foam midsole the whole way through heel to toe. Um, however, ASICs have made it a little bit firmer than what they had with the previous Dynaflight 1 and Dynaflight 2. So a slightly firmer midsole through here. By doing that, they've added a top layer of flight foam propel. Now that just gives the shoe a little bit more response to the gait cycle. So you're staying on top of the ground for a little bit longer. It will potentially add a little bit more life to the midsole of the shoe from the Dynaflight 3 not being as soft, essentially meaning it won't compress at the same rate. As you come up to the upper through here, we're talking about a shoe that has a few little underlays which sits underneath the jacquard mesh which just gives it a little bit of strength and integrity and it's done by hiding um, well, hiding the support system in the ASICS logo. So um, when I showed you before uh, the photos of the logo, how it lights up, you'll see that the straps essentially go from the midsole right up to the lacing system on the lateral side and the same thing with the medial side as well. Uh, so the logo isn't just there for the cosmetic features, it does play a critical role in the support system in the upper as well. So um, reinforcing the upper from the midsole through to the lacing system through here. Um, I didn't find it uh, overly deep through the navicular region. Um, that being said, it's not the shallowest shoe out there by any means that tempo running. Um, just throwing that out there because if you've got an orthotic in it and it has quite a, a raised arch, it may not be a great shoe for you to consider for your tempo running. Um, that's just my own personal opinion. Um, there's certainly going to be orthotics out there that are going to fit into this shoe absolutely fine. Just with my orthotic that had quite a, quite a raised arch, it was a bit of a tight squeeze for me. The mesh configuration as it comes through to the forefoot, you can see, like they did previously, you see the horizontal sort of stripes across the top. 
So it's kind of hard to see with a black shoe I know. I apologize about that, but you can see how the um, mesh lining has these horizontal straps. Now, what I do like about that is it does allow for a slightly more customized fit through that forefoot. So when your foot ever so slightly expands during a running session, whether it be a longer, slower run, or a tempo session where you're doing some fart like running, um, I did enjoy the amount of expansion I got through that forefoot. So it just gives me a little bit more toe room through there. However, I'm just alluding to the fact that it's a little bit shallower through the navicular region through here. Internal heel counter at the back through here. So nice and deep. I liked it. It was a good deep fit for me. So um, with my orthotic with that slight heel raise, no issues whatsoever with the fit of the heel. Um, through there, it was a great, uh, great setup, great fit. However, for a neutral foot type or a foot type that doesn't have any device in the shoe, I think you're really going to enjoy the extra support back here. Um, I want to talk about that just quickly too, if you don't mind, because what we find with, with runners that uh, look at uh, sort of shoes that are designed for more speed work where you're not really coming down like a traditional heel striker, you're coming down midfoot, forefoot, a lot of people out there go, what's the point of having support back here? You know, it's just extra weight to the shoe that I don't need because I'm hitting this region through here. If you talk about your calcaneus, Obviously, I'll get my little foot tight through here. So this little critter here, this little bone through there. If you talk about the calcaneus, if you're hitting midfoot, forefoot coming down through here, there is still room for your calcaneus to move because it's not necessarily the anchor point on contact. It actually still plays a critical role in keeping your foot stable and your ankle stable because it's essentially the bone that takes the load from the ground and almost works to hinge with the rest of your ankle through here. So... Yes, for midfoot, forefoot strikers, it's still vitally important. Your foot is stable through this back region through here. That's why ASICs have still stuck to some integrity, kept it nice and stable, nice and deep, nice and strong. So even for that midfoot, forefoot runner, we don't want any movement through your calcaneus because it will just add extra stress to your ankle um, through your running session. So there we have it, guys. The ASICs Dynaflight 3. Great little shoe, some cool features about this little guy. There is a, uh, is a few colours to pick from um, in this range over the next 12 months, not just the reflective number, but I thought I'd show and do my review on this little guy because it's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching again. Uh, any questions, please add a comment to this video below. If you'd like to see me do a review on a specific shoe, please drop a comment on this video. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe already. Um, there's more shoe reviews coming later this year. Till next time, happy running. Yeah.